I'm Carla Cannon and I wanted to share in this video some fun things that I've done with my kids in their preschool years. Um, we started this about, you know, three and a half ish, depending on the kids interest. And then these are the types of things I would do until they were ready for kindergarten. So I think for me, it was more important what they were ready for versus the age, but that gives you a range. In one of my other videos, I talked about what we have done at this age for learning their numbers, uh, counting and also how to write them. And so this video is going to focus specifically on letters and sounds and how I introduce those. And best of all, everything that I'm going to show you, all the resources we used, I got for free online. Uh, I think it's important for me to point out that I didn't use any one thing I would only and so I would caution you as you're getting excited and doing some planning maybe don't print out everything you think you're going to do do you know one or two letters at a time and print some things that you think your child would enjoy and then you can go from there that way you haven't spent $300 on ink just to find out that your child doesn't enjoy, enjoy doing little worksheets and activities so you know just print out kind of a few things at a time that you think your child will enjoy and then that way I would just kind of plan for a letter or two at a time and then what I would print out and give to my kids would just depend on their interest and what kinds of things they were enjoying so uh, kind of how I approach letters is I started with the vowels so we would learn the vowels first because I thought that it was you know those are going to be the kind of cornerstone when they're hitting the kindergarten and starting to read so we would start with the vowels and learn you know upper and lowercase vowels and focus on we would learn the name of the letter but most of the time I focused on the letter sound so if we were learning a you know I would ah, 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 lots of that kind of thing so I did do kind of a combination of uh, like worksheet things that were fun and then also some hands-on things. All the worksheets uh, and little pages that I did, I found online for free. Um, and I will have all those links below in the video. And so, and then I would just kind of pick and choose. So I didn't ever do the same thing every time. But one that was really, one area that was really fun was from one plus one plus one and she has her animal alphabet and so that was one um, resource that I did use almost every time we did a letter and so she would have fun things like these play-doh mats and I just put them in a sheet protector and so then um, we could look at the letter and it went along with of course alligator and then we would make the letter out of play-doh so that was kind of a fun example um, something that I did consistently as well that worked well was these pages from a measured mom and again these would be letters of all sizes and so for each letter and she just had them for the capitals but that was okay um they could practice making the letter big and then progressively it got smaller and again i just put it in a sheet protector and we'd use a dry erase marker so we could do it more than once so that was lots of fun and then also we used the app iggy alphabet and that was a really fun way for my kids to learn how to make the letters before they even had a pencil in hand. So, um, you know, it would give them different activities and they could trace the letter with their finger. So by the time they even picked up the pencil, they knew how the letter was formed. So as I mentioned, uh, the app Iggy Alphabet is a great one. Uh, here you can get a peek at it and they have activities for every letter of the alphabet. So you just choose your letter and then they kind of can work through them in order. And what's fun is as they go through the different activities, they earn little um, points, little golden eggs, and they get to hatch a pet. And so that is silly, but cute and always a big hit. So they can do the letter, um, you know, dot to dot, then they copy the letter and that makes sure that they're forming it in the right way. And then they draw the letter freehand and then some kind of letter sound activities and they have it both for the upper and lower case and so that was nice so that was super effective way you know when we started a new letter and we did not do a letter a week we did a letter for as long as we felt like doing a letter so if we were on a for a week great if we were on a for a month I didn't worry about it it was just supposed to be fun once I kind of felt like they knew the letter 
we moved on if we were busy no big deal I didn't have a strict time frame in mind so uh, we would you know do some kind of hands-on things we would use the iPad app um, some other kind of fun things we would do these were from uh, confessions of a homeschooler we did some letter collages so a is for animals uh, uh, animal and she glued a bunch of things on like I said every week we did different things um, we would do these were always kind of a hit these letter um, mazes once again from one plus one plus one and I'll have that link below so they had to find all of them I was always like find the be the mama and get it to the baby you know things like that super cute so kind of fun things like that um, other things that we did, I tried to kind of keep it hands-on. So when my second child, my son, was getting ready to learn his letters, we went down to the river one day and I got enough smooth river rocks to have a uppercase and lowercase for every alpha letter in the alphabet. And so then as we learned letters, I had a kind of a little table that I put their things out on and, um, you know, I would have them you know, match the letters. And then as they learned letters, we would just keep a container of the letters they knew on the table. So then I would, you know, mix them up and spread them out. And often, you know, just kind of walking by, they would walk by and I'd be like, oh, why don't you match up the lowercase ones and the uppercase ones? And so they could do that. And then we just kind of added. So it was a nice way to kind of build in some review as we went along. Uh, I have these super cute bean bags that I got and they have the letters on them we would also make paper plates for the letters so they could do it with paint and then what was fun with the paper plates is I would spread you know once again as you're learning more letters there's a few more things you can do with them but I would spread the paper plates around the room and then they could go and match the bean bag to one of them they could match the rocks to them and that was fun um i could also throw the rocks at them. no i didn't throw the rocks at them of course but the bean bags were fun because i could toss the bean bag and they would could catch it and I'd say all right what you know what sound does it make um i also have these kind of picture cubes that are neat you can slide um things in them these have words on it right now but i could you know slide in a paper with just the letter on it and so I could have you know multiple letters on there and when they caught it they had to say the sound the letter made and the name so like I said I just tried to keep it super light and hands-on and we would do things you know anywhere from one second to 20 minutes depending on how engaged and how much fun they were having once we'd worked our way through the vowels then I you can just google online what letters are the most used so the most common letters in the alphabet such as um, S and R and T. So then I just kind of would go in that order of the most common letters as I figured that would help them out with their reading um, the more that they got into that. And so some other fun things that we did, once again, from the animal ABCs from one plus one, they had these little collages and you know, you could F is for frog and they glue the frogs down. My daughter got very creative with her F decorating there and that was okay, I learned as my kids, as I had, you know, I've had three and this was my last one uh, that I had done this stuff with and I just learned to let it go. If they wanted to scribble Fs all over their frog sheet, that was great. They were writing the letter F. I think I would have been a little more, <gasps> what a mess, if it was my oldest, but I learned to let go and we had a lot more fun. So we did things like that. Um, these are from a confession of a homeschooler, these little story hunt ones. So I would read the little story and they would circle all the F's or whatever their letter was that we were focusing on. Um, what else did we do? As we got further into it and my daughter got a little bit older, then I found some mazes. This was easy peasy learners. And so this one was a little bit trickier than the one I'd shown you before. So we did some mazes. Um, as you can see, just a wide variety of things. You know, we didn't just stick with any one thing, but I'll put all the links below the video and you can kind of click and pick out some things that you think would be fun for your child. Whenever we could incorporate games, I also tried to do that. So I have, just as an example, if you're not familiar with the Spotted games, they have them for numbers and also an alphabet one. So as they learned more of their numbers to recognize more numbers and letters, then playing this quick game was a really fun way to reinforce both the letter names and sounds. 
And also um, from the animal ABCs that I've mentioned a couple times now, as we learned the letter, and so it, you know, of course it starts off very small, but as we learn more and more letters, then they have, you can make a little book. And so then my daughter, you know, would read F is for frog and G is for gorilla. And that was a fun way for her to read a book, even though of course she wasn't quite ready for reading. She felt good about that. And it was always like, yay, you learned a new letter. And then we'd add it to her little book. So that was a fun thing we added in. Um, having some books that focus on the letters of the alphabet is a great way to do it too. So I have these, and I've seen these, you know, just at Costco. They're the um, Scholastic Alpha Tales Big Learning Set. So there was a book for every letter of the alphabet that were super cute. Obviously the child wasn't reading them. I would read it to them and I would over exaggerate the sound of the letter and they'd point to the letter as we read it. So cute little funny books. I mean, we're not talking great literary value here, but they were cute and just another way to kind of expose them to the letter. And then these, these are really cute. These are Moncure and I don't know, um, if they are in print anymore. These are kind of old school, but these are really cute if you can find them. It says my first steps to reading and um, you could probably find them secondhand. I've seen them around, but these are cute because they're little stories, but about, and the letter is a little character. And then they kind of go through and they collect things that start um, with the letter. And they have, I don't know, just cute pictures and sometimes you know, the child, I would have her, you know, I'd point at things and they'd say the A word, you know, now little A, you know, dropped his ants and his arrows and his ax. And so if you can find those, those are super cute as well. To summarize, I would just say, try to keep it simple and fun and do not get too worried about it. You have lots of years for your child to learn these things. And a little secret from me to you is that they do not need to know every letter and every sound before you start kindergarten. Uh, and what often happens is that as they learn, you know, about half the letters and sounds, all of a sudden you'll be doing something and they'll just know other ones. So they just kind of pick it up as they go along. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing. And also, you know, if you watch my video on what we use for our kindergarten language arts, they go through a letter a week with that and introduce them and start them with their reading. So, you know, this is really just kind of an exposure thing. It's a fun thing. And um, my kids really did learn most of their letters and sounds doing it this way. And then that was just something that they were able to build upon once they hit kindergarten. I think if you have room in your house for a little table in a corner somewhere, that's a nice thing. Um, I had just a small end table that we weren't using anymore that I found room for and I just put a small cork board, you know, nothing huge, but just a little one I got at Walmart. And then as we did pages for whatever letter we were on, if we were on F, frog, F is for frog, then, you know, as we did different pages and little things, I'd hang their work up for that letter and I'd lay out their rocks and their bean bags. Um, and just kind of, then when they would walk by, it was just something kind of visual to catch their attention and be like, oh, you know, that's my letter. And they maybe mess around with it a little bit. So that was fun. But anyways, the other thing is the leapfrog movies are really cute. And so you can use those and it's about Tad and Lily. And, you know, so we've been basing the little song, you know, and that's a really fun way for them to learn their letters and sounds. And so we have these little magnets that go on the refrigerator and you know, you put the T says T, the T says T. You get the idea, but these are really cute. And if you watch the Leapfrog movies, then they learn the little song and um, it's just a fun way to practice too. So have fun with it. Don't get stressed out. It's just really to expose them and they do not have to remember everything. Remember, you've got lots of years and just exposing them helps them to develop. It's fun and um, just kind of builds one more layer of the foundation of their education. So enjoy those little ones and have fun with your kiddos.